My name is Derrick Dazi, and I am an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nations shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here and with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. A graduate of computer science from Ashesi University in Ghana, Deridin Dadzi describes himself as one who brings the nth dimension to any endeavor, a great driver of strategic aspirations of any entity who brings the creativity needed to create the condition for motivation. Deridin is the CEO at Dream Oval Limited, where he has succeeded in building a strong, dedicated team that can take on global business opportunities. He is also credited with expanding the company's geographical reach and growing its assets. Welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Deridin. Thank you very much, Fab. All, all right, you say in a fast-paced world, you see everything in, in, in slow motion. Yeah. Tell me more about this. Keaton has been able to contextualize your environment and um, being able to slow down mm. and look at things, but at the same time acting very swiftly. Mm. Uh, that, that's how I see the world. So things are moving very fast, but you need to be able to contextualize. You need to be able mm. to see through the lines. You need mm. to be able to see through the different dimensions, mm. you know, and, and that empowers you to make decisions that are going to have long lasting um, positive effect. Okay, tell me about um, growing up in Ghana. What's different about, about Ghana? I had a very uh, beautiful upbringing in spite of all the challenges that um, came with it. Um, I grew up with my grandmother, my aunties, uh, my cousins. Um, there was no fatherly figure, but I, I believe that those moments in my life were some of the defining moments because it was during those times that I picked up that attitude of fending for myself, the attitude of independence, the attitude of seeing vulnerable people around you and then wanting to help them. Because I grew, I grew up surrounded by women, just women, and I was the only uh, boy or only man, you know, I missed um, these women and they gave me some, some touch of empathy to kind of connect to the world, connect to nature, connect to people around me. And I think that that is what drives me in doing the things that I do. Okay, beautiful. Now, you co-founded um, Dream Oval yeah. with um, three of your, Class your, your, your classmates whilst you were completing your university degree at Ashesi yeah. University. Yeah. Now, how did you come together to found this entity? I think that the chemistry between us actually developed through class projects. So in the class, it wasn't just about um, sitting in the class and listening to lectures, mm -hmm. but sitting in the class and figuring out how to reconfigure your world, how mm -hmm. to solve the everyday challenges that you see. And in doing so, you're put into different projects. And when you're put into different projects at different times, you get to pick out those that you gel with, those that you connect with ideologically, in terms, even connect with in terms of energy. Like minds more or less gravitate towards each other because you're always looking to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you, you get a time to work together, you know, mm -hmm. through phone calls, through physical meetings, meeting outside um, the school. And it, it turns out that you guys can actually achieve more when you keep that relationship over the period, and that's, that's how it's been. You've managed to keep this partnership going, yeah. despite the possible challenges that, yeah. could, that could come from partnerships. Yeah. How have you done this? I believe all that's important is trust. Um, trust is very important in this mm -hmm. kind of engagement, especially people from different backgrounds, because each one of us in the team grew up in different environment, okay. grew up under different circumstances, grew up under different principles. But what is important is that in a stage in our life, we've got to find out, we found ourselves in an environment that's aligned and more or less streamlined how we think. So we went to a school that taught us something like integrity, that taught us ethical leadership, that taught us entrepreneurship. So in that stage, you more or less synchronize your thought. In that stage, you more or less have a, a balanced view which looks similar. Right, so in dealing with each other, those things always come out, and you're able to have that kind of um, gelling or chemistry that keeps um, the team going, and that's how we've been able to we've been able to establish 
that the trust, that brotherliness, you know, and also the common goal. Mm. I think that's very important. That mm. common goal that we want to achieve also mm. keeps us together. Okay, in this article um, published in The Guardian in the United Kingdom, right. um, you are described as not the poster child you would expect to see for Africa, right. but a part of Africa's emerging class of young entrepreneurs who are presenting a serious challenge yeah. to Western ideas of African development. Yeah. Now, when you read this, what was the first thought that crossed your mind? First of all, uh, reading that, I, I realized that people are recognizing the fact that there are new breed of Africans mm -hmm. that are presenting a different challenge and a different perspective to how we are viewed globally. Mm -hmm. And that, first of all, elated me, but also saw it as something to drive me, mm -hmm. you know, to do more so that I can actually entrench that belief because um, the, the rhetoric around Africa has always been we are receivers of aid or mm -hmm. we are conflict driven people and the people who come from Africa are, ha, ha, mostly don't get the kind of regard they deserve mm -hmm. for the kind of input they make to the world mm -hmm. and for me that recognition or that statement um, by the, the Guardian newspaper for me was very important to me because it, it, it threw up um, a new dimension to the rest of the world to see that we have emerging African and not just me, just a lot more people you know who are there and who are also coming, who are actually presenting a new dimension to how the world views Africa and its people. So you mentioned online that you're, you've expanded the geographical reach of Dreamoval. Right. Where is Dreamoval playing today? Uh, right now we, in terms of um, jobs or in, in terms of things that we are doing, we, we, we work with clients across, um, from the United States um, to clients in Kenya. Um, and I think last year, November, I went to explore um, the Mauritian market um, to see whether we can have um, any advantage mm -hmm. there. So it's one place that we're also looking um, in terms of um, geographical expansion and where we want to have our footprint. So iWallet is one of your online products that I believe has morphed into SlidePay. Yeah. Tell me more about this product. iWallet was uh, one of our co-founders pet project from, from university. So we've been working on this throughout the years from 2004 to date. And um, it's primarily aimed at breaking all the barriers that prevented Africans from having to do e-commerce uh, and also breaking the barriers around transactions. We want to be able to have a more convenient way to use the, their money, right? And um, open up the channels for e-trade and e-services. So that's what iWallet, which is now SlidePay, does. Right now we have a partnership with Stambay Bank, and which is first of its kind in terms of FinTech bank collaboration. And we are pushing SlidePay very hard into the market. Mm -hmm. We have about um, 30,000 people on the platform right now. Subscribers. Uh, yeah, subscribers. Wow. And, we, and we are pushing the frontiers because we have a very huge target uh, before the end of the year. So. Okay, so I read somewhere that iWallet was in partnership at some point with Airtel Money. Right. Do you still have that um, partnership going? Yeah, we do. Um, so when we started iWallet, yeah. we're the first company um, in, in, in Ghana to integrate an existing um, payment platform, a mobile money platform into your system mm -hmm. to deliver services to customers. Okay. So we started that and that relationship is still there and we've been really expanded that relationship because we've paved the way for other people to also have access to the same um, module or the same API to also offer similar service. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing it not with just Eto, but we are doing with MTN, Tigo Cash, you know, all the mobile money platforms out there mm -hmm. are connected to um, slight pay and we, we even connected to MasterCard and Visa and we're expanding the channels on which people can utilize slight pay for business. Now you also created another product, my text body, I yeah. believe that's what it's called. Right. Um, it's a cloud-based bulk SMS service box. Yeah. What makes it different from right. all other products in the market? Right. My text body was something that we started like um, when we started business. It was supposed to be our bread and butter. You know, there are things that we really want to do. Mm -hmm. And the other things that you need to do to survive so you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so my tether was one of the things that we need to do to, to be able to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. What is different about it is the kind of power that it gives the customer, you know, to be able to engage 
its customers. It enables you to reach out to um, your customers and inform them about different things that is happening to them. So we have banks using my text buddy where they do financial transactions, um, notifications with it. Uh, we have churches who use it to remind their uh, churches members of um, events in the church. People use it for um, disaster um, mobilization, inform people of disasters. We've had different use cases for my test body and the key thing is the power it gives the people and how you can customize the API or the service to deliver different kinds of value to um, your target market and that makes it more powerful than the others on the, on, in, in the system. Amazing. Now today the balance sheet of um, your company is well over 3 million Ghana CDs. Have you ever had to raise capital at any point in time? And if so, how? Uh, we've, we've not had to raise capital. Our initial capital came from within. Um, so from the onset, we had the organic approach to our business development. I wanted to grow our business organically. Mm -hmm. And um, we did that through our own internal contributions. Um, but the, from the initial stage, we had support from some of our classmates. You know, so it doesn't like those gargantuan VC level of support, mm -hmm. but the little to get the transportation of the business going, like make sure that you're able to go to the next client to get business in. And um, over the period, we've grown the business organically. This is Under 40 CEOs. Dreamoval has created solutions like my text buddy and iWallet and continues creating solutions to complex issues using technology. Deridin has since been described by the Guardian of the United Kingdom as part of Africa's emerging class of young entrepreneurs who are presenting a serious challenge to Western ideas of African economic development. It's on record that the company has a trophy cabinet full of trophies. Right. Now, from Entrepreneur of the Year to the Gold Star Award, uh, that was from the president. Yeah. Um, what do these awards and accolades mean to you? Uh, for me, it means a new standard. You always have to up the ante. If you get one today, that represented excellence. You need to get another one the next year, that should represent something beyond excellence. So for me, getting awards is a call for more action. All right, so what are the most important things um, to take note of when setting up a business in Ghana? For me, setting up a business, one of the key things is everything can be important. What you need to do is just do, because you need to learn um, from your mistakes. You need to be able to do. Now, how do you ensure that the collateral damage when you take a decision is not too huge that you cannot pick yourself off the ground? Uh, I believe that you need to start small, but you need to think big. You need to have a very powerful vision, a vision that transcends generations. The other key is you need to know who your partners are mm -hmm. because you can't run a business without knowing the right people, without knowing who to partner with to get you there. And one of the key things you need to also note is when you want to do business in Ghana, you need to know our laws. Mm -hmm. You need to register the business, you need to make sure that you, you are complying with all our tax laws or any other laws. And when you're able to establish that dynamic or that kind of relationship with all these um, different components of doing business, I believe that you become successful in Ghana. So you've been described uh, by many as an orator, right. and you've spoken at many events. Right. What's your favorite thing to talk about? For me, one of the key things that concern me is nth dimension thinking. So for me, what I believe is that for every dimension that the world achieves, or any individual achieves, there could be another dimension to it. You can have an increased dimension of that value. So I don't believe in mediocrity. Mm -hmm. I believe in big visions. So I want to talk about people development. I want to talk about solving problems. I want to talk about the fact that everything is possible. So far as it can be thought, um, it can be done. And I believe that the problems that we face in Africa can be solved largely by entrepreneurial citizens, by citizens who take charge of affairs and try to manage the affairs of their own you know, environment, their own nation. How yeah. has travel and interacting with different cultures added yeah. value to you and your firm? For me, it's really the exposure, and everybody needs it. And I wish that every individual in this part of our world would just travel and see, because it adds to your perspective, 
and it asks to your ability to innovate because when we innovate, we don't innovate within the confines of our geographical location. Mm -hmm. You need to you know, you innovate to transcend borders. And that's why countries like China, Japan, India are able to come to us, right? We need to have the same kind of mindset and the same kind of opportunity to also go to them. Mm -hmm. You can only do that if you've had a taste of their environment mm -hmm. to see the problems that they are facing and to come down within your environment, see the resources that you have that can solve their problems and then figure it out and then deliver something that people can buy. We all know human resources is a key element right. uh, to consider when growing an enterprise. How right. do you hire? We hire people with nature. Mm -hmm. So um, we have um, a framework we call the DO Academy, that's the Dream of All Academy, okay. which is modeled like the football academy where you have people in the pipeline that you are training, but they're not playing the first team. Um, mm -hmm. So these are university students and high school students that we've onboarded onto internship program. Mm -hmm. So we, we get to them at a very young age, mostly mm -hmm. from high school to university, and then we give them access to the kind of work that we are doing, mm -hmm. and then we let them practice um, what they learn in school. Whilst they practice with us, um, they get a chance to work with us, and whilst they're working with us, they do their national service with us. After national service, they, they become a part of us. So over 70% of our team members are actually people that we've nurtured um, mm -hmm. from the grassroots to the top. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah. So tell me, what's your leadership style? I'm not structured. Yeah. I believe that as an entrepreneur, you can't go with the norm. You have to flow like water. So you take the shape of your container whilst mm -hmm. at the same time trying to change the things around you. Mm -hmm. So that, That's how I lead. And one of the most important component of my leadership is empathy with the people around me. I, mean, I try to get a little mm -hmm. personal with them yeah, to be able to more or less understand whatever they are going through to enable them also deliver, you know, what the company has put together as a goal or as a vision. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. Okay, so I believe that the most successful business leaders in the world have at one point or the other failed. Right. Tell me about your failures as a leader. Probably I might not be able to easily recognize because of how I see the world. Because for me, for every downtime is, is an uptime in terms of how I think about the situation. There are things that we have done that did not succeed initially, but now they've come, they've actually been the thing that we are using um, as our springboard and another fortune when it comes to project, when it comes to business. I feel that every day and every situation is an opportunity to learn and unlearn. So probably it makes me easily forget about things that I go through and just move on. How important is delegation to you? It's very important and because of that you need to empower the people around you and and because as a leader you are the visionary you, you, you your, your key role is actually manage the vision and take the business to the next level mm -hmm. you need to get people around you who can do your job when you're not around mm -hmm. at least at a, at a point of execution so I, I actually like to work with people who are smarter than me i believe that the people around me are way 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 ahead of me when it comes to execution smartness and mathematics and all the dynamics of execution mm -hmm. but i believe i have a certain gift that they also don't have. Um, so when it comes to education, delegation is very, 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 very important. And I, I do that a lot. Now you've said, and permit me to quote you, um, people's skills are very fundamental yeah. and important for being a successful business owner. Yeah. Now, what other key skill sets does a CEO need to acquire to become successful? I think to be successful as CEO, you need conviction. Mm -hmm. Because when the decision that you take, that people might not agree with, mm -hmm. but you're convinced that this is going to work. You have this kind of innate you know, feeling that th something is going to work. CEOs also need certain intangible skills like intuition. Mm -hmm. you, you need to know when things are right and when things are wrong. You also need to be very analytical. You should be able to look at numbers and deduce and make decisions. So the, the, the modern CEO should be a CEO that really appreciates and understand quantitative decisions or who can make decisions based on quantitative analysis. You need to understand technology, you need to know where technology is going and CEOs should be able to learn to craft visions that can transcend them, visions that will still exist, that will live even when they are not there. And if as a CEO you just focus on the numbers and the profit and you might actually end up having a company that would die with you. But if you focus on something bigger than just the profit that you're making now, you, you end up set up a company that's going to be a unicorn, that's going to be in the billion dollar, dollar range. So talking about crafting, yeah. now what values 
have you deployed to craft DreamOval? When it comes to how we innovate and how the principle that we've, we've crafted around it, the openness of the organization, everybody's input being part of the brainstorming process, there's transparency, uh, we have a lot of integrity, and the customer being the king when it comes to the ultimate um, direction of wherever we are going is for us, is sacrosanct, is core to our values. What would you say is the biggest letdown you've experienced in your career so far? Whew. There are things that as an entrepreneur you need to do it. And as an entrepreneur in our part of the world, the political landscape does not enable you to affect society in a very original and authentic way. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you come out and, and you have an opinion about the social situation or about how things are supposed to be done, you're attacked politically. And sometimes that does not help entrepreneurs or private people who have very great ideas you know, to partake in the social discourse when it comes to how a nation or how our politics should be done. And I think that that restriction, you know, is a little bit hurting to the good of our nation. I think that, that that's a letdown of the system and of the mindset of the society. I, I believe that it's about time that we in Africa allow everybody, irrespective of whoever the person is, to partake in the political conversation, in, 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 even in politics, so that we can have good solutions to the problems that we face. This is Under 40 CEOs. Deridin challenges himself by setting new standards for every milestone he achieves and having to run a business that employs well over 60 individuals will surely take its toll on him. However, we seek to find out how Deridin unwinds and enjoys the resources he works so hard to generate. I have a few quick fire questions for you. What do you love to eat? I like to eat spaghetti. What's your fashion style? Casual. What brands um, are your favorite? I, I like to go with my local brand. So what other CEOs do you currently look up to? Bill Gates. What's your favorite car to drive? The car I want to right now is a very simple Escalade. What's your favorite travel destination? I like to go back home mm -hmm. to Takrade. What's your favorite book of all time? The Road Less Traveled by mm -hmm. Peck M. Scott. Yeah. So what book are you reading right now? So right now I'm reading The Link Startup. Lastly, what would you say makes Deridin happy? I think I find happiness in solitude, right? Mm -hmm. And also having people around me at the same time. I like to be in an environment that I, I actually make people happy and through that I'm, I become happy. So have everything in my fridge, have friends around who come and cook for them, you know, like just hang out around friends within an environment that is done by me. All right, thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs, Deridin. Thank you for having me, folks. All, right. All right. My name is Deridin Dazi, and you can be an Under 40 CEO too.